Hello everybody, this is Avi from AF Math and Engineering. We are continuing our topic on serving and we decided to do a question on differential leveling, which is a fairly easy topic that a lot of students find troubling during the midterm. So I'm going to do a really simple question, which will hopefully help you figure out the theory, and then we'll try and do one midterm question later with a few tricks on it. So in this question, we need to fill in the missing leveling notes, calculate the loop miss closure, and perform the necessary adjustments if needed. So the thing that I find difficult for students is that usually in college or in university, you don't get a lot of field practice and you don't really go out there with the device and do too much of uh, serving. And then you just get the page and you need to do the calculations, which makes you kind of lose it. Okay, so here's a, a drawing that I sketched that I hopefully will hopefully will help you understand what's going on here. So imagine this, we're going out, we're standing on a terrain, this is the mean sea level, and we need to take a serving of the entire area. Now this area is in 2D, so you will understand the, the fact that we're actually standing on a mountain, <laughs> and the 3D, you can only have points A and B here, and in the 3D, you can actually, something that I draw that you will understand that we're going in a circle here. And that's the type of uh, leveling that we are doing because always the point that we start and we end is a known point and that's how we know we actually got to the right uh, point. But we'll get, to, we'll get on that later. So that's the only reason that you have A and B here and you don't have C because in C we're actually going up. And let's start with the example. So imagine it, we have, we're standing on the top of the mountain, we're taking out the automatic leveling device, we have a guy or a girl holding the rods, and we're starting to shoot. So the first point is the benchmark. The benchmark is a known point of elevation, and that's basically the point that we know where we are standing compared to the mean sea level. I chose an easy number so you'll understand the mathematics here. And let's say that we are standing 100 meters above mean sea level. We took the shot and the first shot that we are taking from the, taking from the device to the rod is called the backside. Okay? And the device gave us a number of 1 meter and 33 centimeters. Now what does this number mean? That number, if we add it, to our elevation, to our known elevation in the benchmark, will give us the height of the instrument, which is 101.33 meters. All right, and this is basically this pink nice arrow. Now we are taking the full sight. We are taking another shot to the next point that we want to figure out its elevation. Our guy or girl is standing, holding the rod at the next point that we want to shoot from. And he got, the device gave us an answer of 8.37 meters. What does that mean? It means that if we take this pink arrow, the height of the instrument, minus the height that we got right now, minus the 8.37 meters that we got now, we will get the elevation at point 8. So 101.33 minus 8.37 meters give us 92.96 meters. Moving on. So we stand with our device over here and we take a back sight and we take a full sight. Okay, a good thing to do is always to write plus and minus here. So you will remember what you need to add and what you need to deduct. So at this time, at this point, our back sight gives us 0 0.22 meters while our full sight gave us 7.91 meters okay our elevation at point a which is known is 92.96 meters adding those two up we get the new height of the instrument which is 93.18 meters and that's the second pink line that you can see over here all right, deducting the full sight from the height of the instrument gives us the elevation at point B, which is 
0.27 meters. All right, and we got the elevation point B. Okay, moving on, and I guess you got the point by now, so we can just continue and fill in the charts. So 85.27 plus 0.96 gives us 86.23, and deducting 0.68 from that number gives us 85.55. Moving on, um, our next height of the instrument is 85.55 plus 15.23, which gives us 178. So as you can see, it's always the same thing. Here we add, here we deduct, we get the elevation, get the new height of the instrument, add, deduct, and move on. All right? Now, in the last number, our last foresight, deducting the 0 0.76 meters and our final number here is 100.02 meters now imagine that we went in a circle basically we should have ended up with the same elevations as we started what happened basically is an arrow somewhere along the way could be a human arrow could be the guy holding the rod not standing in the same location somebody moving the device moving there's a lot of arrows and there's a lot of things that need to be done to fix those arrows, but that's one of them. So, how can we adjust the elevation and fix what we did? Well, the first thing we will do is calculate the loop misclosure, which is actually understanding how much are we far off. And here it's pretty obvious that our answer should be 0 0.02 meters far off, but in case you need to calculate it and you have a lot of numbers, what you do is you take the sum of the back sides, add them all up, we will get 17.74 and then you take the sum of the four sides, add them all up, we would get 17.72, all right, and if we take the sum of the back side minus the sum of the full side, we would get 0 0.02. Now how do we get the loop misclosure? The loop misclosure is just the difference over the number of stations, which in this case was 1, 2, 3, 4. So 0 0.02 over 4 would give us 0 0.005 meters okay now how do we perform the adjustment let's take off this page so we could do it easily very simple for each station we would basically do the adjustment and multiply by n plus one so for the first one there's no need to adjust because this is a known elevation this is the number that we want to finish with the second one station a we will do 0 0.005 times one, which will basically give us the same number, rounding up to two significant digits because that's what the question is asking us. And that's usually the common practice in uh, surveying, two significant digits, and we would get the same number. So our first elevation is 100 and our second elevation at A is also 92.96, but at the third elevation, it's 0 0.005 times two, this time we are getting 0 0.01 meters which we need to deduct from the elevation why we need to deduct because we went over and that's how we know if we need to deduct or add so in this case we need to deduct so the adjusted elevation would be 85.26 moving on to point c 0 0.005 times 3 equals 0 0.015 meters two significant digits would give us 0 0.01 again and again we are deducting 0 0.1 so uh so we get 85.54 for this and 
our final uh, adjustment 0 0.05 times 4 would give us 0 0.02 which will basically give us a hundred and that's what we want that's how we know that we got the answer that we want because if we start and finish at the same point it has to have the same number that's how we know we don't have any errors in our answer sometimes we can live with the error it depends on the project that we are doing but let's say that here we want to be as exact as possible so that's the adjustment that we need to make in each one of the elevations and that's about it we will do a bit more complicated questions later there's a few more tricks that we want to do but that's really the basic basic of serving hope you enjoyed it stay tuned like and subscribe